Josh, the relationship between free will and moral judgment is an important one because people would say that if there is no free will, then how can we hold people accountable? So this is not only a philosophical question, it's an important question for society and the penal system and uh, uh, how the courts work. Uh, how does your work on free will and understanding that impinge on philosopher society's approach to morality, moral responsibility, and moral judgment? Well, so one thing you might think is that this process is completely linear. First, we decide whether people have free will, and then based on that, we make this moral judgment. So we might say, he has free will, so he can be to blame. But what we've been suggesting is that there's something more to it than that. In some cases, it can actually go the opposite direction. You make a moral judgment, and so based on that, you think that the person did it freely. If you made the opposite moral judgment, you think they were forced. So you can. So that's a very significant point. Oh, right. That shows that the, the direction of causality is not one way. Right. It goes both ways. That makes it very complicated. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. So it might be that it's because we regard certain things as morally wrong that we end up seeing the pe people who did them as free. So we conducted various different kinds of studies that tried to get at these people's intuitions about these cases. In some cases showing that it's only when you regard something as being morally wrong that you think the person did it freely. Yeah, which is the opposite of the way people normally look at this philosophical question. Mm -hmm. They assume that they can independently make the free will or not free will judgment, mm -hmm. and then therefore it's a, it, it, it goes by force to determine the moral responsibility. What you're claiming is, is that normal simplicity is, is not right. That there, right. That there's a, an interaction there. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, one of the studies we did actually used a famous example from Aristotle's work. So, in one condition, participants were told this story that actually appears in Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics. Yeah. So, the story is, imagine this sailor out at sea, and he sees there's a huge storm coming. The only way that he can save his ship from capsizing, from falling over, is to just jettison his wife's expensive cargo from the ship. <laughs> if he doesn't do this, the ship's just going to turn over and everyone's going to die. So, then, he thinking quickly, he just throws the cargo into sea, the cargo falls to the bottom, and then he's able to survive and go home safely. And then participants were asked, did he freely throw the cargo, or was he forced to do that? And in that case, you, you can try it yourself, but people overwhelmingly say he didn't do it freely, he was just completely forced. Yeah, yeah, because he had no choice, because people were going to die, and the, the, it was much more important to keep people alive and all his wife's expensive stuff. Right, so then, in the other condition, we just switched out his wife's expensive cargo for his wife. So, <laughs> so he sees this huge storm is coming. The only way that he can save the ship is to throw a large object over the ship. He looks around. The only thing he can see is his wife. So he throws his wife over. She falls to the bottom of the sea. And then he's able to go home safely and evade the storm. And save a lot of other people. It's not just saving himself. Mm -hmm. Right. And then in that condition, people are asked exactly the same question. Right. Was he forced to do this or did he do it freely? Everything else is the same except the moral significance of the act he performed. Yeah. But people have completely the opposite intuition. Right. They say, he did that completely freely. Yeah. He wasn't forced in any way. Right. So maybe somehow, whether we did something freely is not something we can figure out first and then make the moral judgment. It's that because we regarded it as wrong, we think that the person did it freely. So you, the claim would be, almost the opposite of what the common assumption is. Common assumption mm -hmm. is you have to know what free will is first so you can judge moral mm -hmm. judgment. You're saying there may be some absolute standard of moral judgment, mm -hmm. which in fact creates the situation of, of, our, of our concept of, of whether there was real freedom in the decision, right. which okay. then goes back to the, to the being held blameworthy or creditworthy as a result. Exactly. So if you think about people who have engaged in immoral activities, say on behalf of the government, people who are involved in the Nazi death camps, or if you think it, it's immoral, people who are engaged in torturing detainees in Guantanamo, for example, you might ask the question, did they do that freely, or were they just forced to do it? Probably, if you regard these things as immoral, you think, well, they could always have just refused to obey orders. But if you think they're morally fine, then you'll say, no, they were completely forced by the situation. <laughs> so what is the implication of that? Well, what it seems to suggest is that... It's frightening a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on your point of view. So one implication seems to be, if uh, we learn more about uh, how our brains work and we start to see ourselves as being more determined, 
nonetheless, we're still going to think that people who engage in immoral behaviors are doing so freely because we'll just change our understanding of what it is to be free so that those behaviors end up being regarded as Well, free. you're making assumption that the common human perception of common people is a proper one. Oh, all I was saying is that regardless of whether it's proper, no matter what you learn in the newspaper about neuroscience, you're still going to hold murderers more responsible for what they're doing. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that, but is that logical? So, well, what do you think? If our moral judgments are affecting our intuitions about whether we're free, is that an error or might it be that we're onto something? You're putting me on the spot. Um, you're certainly claiming that moral judgments is now the independent variable and free will is the dependent variable, which is exactly the opposite of my initial thoughts and I think common, common thoughts. Uh, and I think that's perplexing. I think that's, uh, that, that really puts a, a new way of thinking on it. But my problem is I don't know whether that's correct. I, is that not just a, a, a human frailty, a human mistake? In, 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 in coming to that, a human investing of emotions, because sometimes we are more moved by negative things, bad things, horrors, tortures, people dying, people getting hurt, people being affected, than by good things. We're, we have an asymmetric view of bad things versus good things, and that's affecting our whole logic. So if you think that, then maybe this can really have an important impact on you philosophically, because you might think, before you thought these people were acting freely, but now that you see that it's a result of one of your frailties, maybe you're going to change your view. No, but it's just the definition of, of, of free will. It's not the reality of free will. I think we have to be very careful to distinguish between the definitions that whoever puts on it, whether it's philosophers in the past or now using folk uh, analysis of what common people think, which is an interesting point, but that's just what they think. It's not the reality of the free will. So if, if, if we're judging the free will or moral responsibility of a, of a criminal or some person in society, we, we're, we shouldn't be dependent upon common understandings of free will. We should try to discern what the reality is. Right, but if you notice that you have a certain intuition about what the definition of free will is, and then you learn that the reason you're having this uh, intuition about the definition is because of these emotions that are welling up in you, making you want to blame someone, right. maybe you then want to retreat from that. I agree, I agree, that makes sense, that makes sense. So we have to be careful in terms of our definition. I think that's a contribution that you make in an important way that, 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 that has a, is a warning sign. It's, it's, a, it's a blinking light, a blinking red or yellow light that tells philosophers, be careful of what you do because you may too be, be affected by these human emotions or these human affectations. That, that affect your own definitions. I think that's, that's an important contribution. So I think you've gotten a, exactly the right picture of what role this thing is playing. It's not that doing these experiments is going to somehow resolve the entire debate and we have no need for any other form of thought. It's that this will add one extra tool to the philosopher's toolbox, allowing us in certain cases to see that some of the intuitions that we were employing in our philosophy might be actually off base.